Uh, so on the head of analysis at um, Orpheus, um, so we're a specialist cyber threat intelligence company uh, and I'm there managing the uh, team of analysts who are working on um, subscription um, products but also our uh, bespoke work. Um, so we do a lot of threat assessments, we do a lot of work with the intelligence led um, security testing schemes such as CBEST, GBEST. Um, Beyond on, on top of that, sorry, I'm a I'm on the CTIPS Executive Committee, so that's the Crest uh, Threat Intelligence Professionals subgroup of Crest, and um, it's focused on um, expanding um, the uh, capacity and quality um, of CTI in the UK, um, and I also sit on the uh, assessors panel for the Crest Cyber Threat Intelligence exams, and so setting the content for the CCTIM CRTIA. Um, and the practitioner exam uh, and also marking uh, the papers that come in. Uh, I'd say it's pretty varied so it sort of depends whether we've got um, typically we have a fair bit of live project work on um, and I'm kind of involved in a sort of managerial role around uh, various aspects of uh, the intelligence cycle so whether that's um, liaising with clients around uh, requirements developing intelligence collection plans to, to recover data and information which we then process into intelligence, whether it's um, working with the analyst team on uh, our subscription service, on our blogs, on special uh, bits of research and white papers, um, or whether it's um, sort of report writing, uh, working with um, clients. And it's real, I guess, a real, real variety uh, to the role in that sense. Um, so I started off um, quite a few years ago now looking at um, sort of conventional political risk analysis. I think, um, I so I don't have an explicitly technical background. Um, I think for me, going back sort of eight to ten years, um, cyber security, in particular cyber threat, was always going to be one of the biggest um, sort of growth areas. Incredibly dynamic space, I think just going back to sort of t even 2010, 2011 at the start of the decade to see um, how much has changed in terms of, you know, state capabilities and how cyber criminals are monetizing attacks and the, the sort of shaping of the, the activist threat as well. Um, so I think I was, I was always looking for something um, quite dynamic, quite fast moving. Um, and it seems, um, I guess, a really good way to, um, or a good sort of practical application of some of that um, sort of political and security risk and background that I've come from. So very much from a sort of um, softer skill set, analytical route um, than anything more technical. Um, but I've tried to sort of pick up a few things on the way. From a sort of external perspective, it can be incredibly challenging just the, um, the volume of data and information that's out there, particularly in the uh, cyber threat landscape. So I think um, you, look, there's plenty of good um, news outlets, there's plenty of good um, companies in the private sector that are producing white papers, their own coverage, their own research and analysis. Um, I'd almost tend to focus on um, some of those less frequent, almost more strategically minded pieces because I think it can be so difficult um, to keep up with the um, this, this sort of daily torrent of information. And I appreciate it. Come, there's so much out there that yeah. it can be overwhelming, even from um, you know my position trying to wear a couple of different hats. Um, it is incredibly difficult, and I think particularly from people looking at moving into cyber threat intelligence as a sector in particular. Um, I think you know it can be overwhelming, basically. So, I think um, I think on top of that point about um, you know focusing your I guess uh, focusing your reading, focusing your area of interest around specific topics. I think um, you know one of the big shifts in the last few years has been uh, the extent of resources um, that are available to people looking to go into the industry. So whether that's um, you know some of the content on Crest websites, whether that's some of the uh, online uh, e-learning courses, there's some really um, fantastic ones out there if you're looking to uh, develop your technical skills um, or read a bit around more um, specific subject matter. But I think it's about, you know, particularly at the entry level, I think um, engaging with that material, sort of having a, um, having a demonstrable interest um, in the subject matter, I think, is, um, I think is really important and something that will um, sort of set candidates apart.